period. She says, period. All right. Take a look at graph number one. We need to talk about key features of a linear graph. Tell me something about this graph. It's, a, uh, it's linear. It's linear. Okay. So we know this graph is linear. Okay. That's a key feature. It's a linear graph. How do I know it's a linear graph? What makes this linear? It passes the vertical line test. That doesn't necessarily make it linear, though. <laughs> Listen, I like your logic though, okay? Straight line. It's a straight line. What do you see in the name? Line. Line. And it has to be a pattern, a rate of change, right? Good. Your rate of change is a pattern. Okay? Up one to the right two. So, Brenda says, we've got that pattern, and my pattern is up by one and to the right by two. So, my slope is one over two. Because again, my graph goes up by one and to the right by two. Okay? What else can you tell me about this graph? It's positive. So it's in what? It's in the creasing. Oh. <laughs> in the middle. It is in the middle. What if I said x intercept? What would you tell me? Your x intercept's cold. <laughs> it's two, right? Zero, slash no, it's zero. one. Zero, comma, zero. Wow. Where does it cross your x axis? Okay, oh, no. it crosses here, which is zero, comma, zero. What else do we call that? Somebody said it. Origin. Yes. Now we're getting some terms in here. Yes, these are all key features. Sorry. No, we're all we're doing is identifying key features. So you can go underneath the graph. You can go to the side of the graph. Y intercept. Where's my y intercept? Zero. Two. One. Zero, five, one. Where's the y-axis? One. In the middle? In the middle. In the middle? Zero. Zero. <laughs> My y-intercept is also at zero comma zero. Wow. It crosses the y the same place that it crosses the x. Remember, we said it crosses at the origin. Death of you. Okay, the last things we need to talk about, domain and range. Oh, okay. So, I'm traveling along my line. Don't make me get too low. I won't be able to get back up. Am I ever going to stop going to the left? No. Which means I'm going to continue to the left till infinity. And because I'm going to the left, that means it's Negative infinity. Okay. I'm following my line to the right. Am I ever going to stop going to the right? No. And I'm going in the positive direction. So positive infinity. So my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, or they may write all real numbers. That means the same thing. Okay. My range is how low do I go? How high do I go? 
How low does my graph go? Is it ever going to stop getting low? No. Negative infinity. Remember, that left-hand side is going down to the left and down to the left and down to the left. It's never going to stop. So your range is also negative infinity. On the other hand, the right-hand side is going up to the right, up to the right, up to the right. So what's happening when I'm going up? Is it going to stop? No. no. So it's positive infinity. Or again, all real numbers. Okay. Tip and trick. Unless they make your line some kind of a segment. So the only time this will ever change is if they change up your graph. And instead of giving you this, okay, with the arrows, if they change it and do this, that will change your domain. Because at that point, your domain has a stopping point and a stopping point because it's not going to continue in both directions. Okay. So more often than not, your domain and range for a line will always be the same. Negative infinity to positive infinity because it's going to continue to go, whether it's an increasing line or whether it's a decreasing line. It's still going to continue. If those arrows are there, it is continuing. So, this part of it, never going to change. All right. Let's go to number two. What do we know about this graph? Okay. So, it's linear. What do we know about the slope of this graph? Okay, so it's going down two and to the right two. So negative two, because it's going down. Positive two, because it's going to the right. What does that reduce down to? One, good. Negative one over one is my slope. Okay, what else do we know to spot this graph? Decreasing. It's decreasing. Okay. What's my x intercept? Negative three. Okay, it crosses my x axis right here. So negative three comma zero. My y-intercept is where it crosses my y-axis. Zero, comma negative three. Remember, x comma y. <coughs> okay. Do I have arrows on both ends of my line? Yes. yes, they're tiny. You really can't see them. They are there, which means my domain is all real numbers. And my range is all real numbers. Okay. It's going to continue to go to the left. It's going to continue to go to the right. It's going to continue to go down and it's going to continue to go up. To the bottom left. Whew. 
All right. Are we still linear? Yes. Just wait till we start talking about nonlinear graphs. What's my slope of this line? Positive one, one, one half. over two, one half. Okay, again, to get from this point to this point, I'm going up by one and to the right by two. What else do we know about this graph? It's positive. It's increasing. It's positive, so it's increasing. If my slope is positive, we automatically know it's increasing. Okay. What did you just say, Seth? Okay. Seth says there's going to be an x-intercept, but it doesn't show it. Okay. If they give you a graph and it doesn't show it, you just put unknown. You don't know what it is. It's not telling me what it is. Could we technically find it? Yes. They are not going to expect you to, though, unless they give you an equation or they tell you to find the equation first. Okay. There is a y-intercept, though. Negative three and a half. And my y-intercept is zero comma negative three and a half. Because again, it crosses halfway between three and four. Are there arrows on both ends of my line? Yes. So that means domain and range are both all real numbers. You could put either or. So instead of putting all row numbers, you could put negative infinity to positive infinity. It means the same exact thing. Okay. Good question. Anybody else? Linear graphs are probably the easiest ones to have key features for. Last one. Linear. My slope this time is I heard negative five over what'd you say? Four. Okay. To get from my leftmost point, whoops. I'll get it in a minute. We go down by five and I go to the right by four. So negative five over positive four. So what's that tell me about my line? It's negative, it's negative which means it's decreasing. Okay. Xavier says I do have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. What's my x-intercept? Mm, careful, here's zero, zero. My line actually crosses here. Negative one, comma, zero. Okay. Be careful, you're at that age now where they're not going to take your x and y intercepts and make them bold, okay? All they're gonna do is they're gonna put arrows at the end and they're gonna put x and they're gonna put y. If you need to bold them to make it more visible for you, that's fine. But they're not going to make it bold so it stands out. Why? Because that would make it easy. We're trying to get it harder. What's my y-intercept? Zero comma negative one. And my domain and range are all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity.
and beyond. Go Toy Story. I thought that doesn't come out till no. No, I don't know it came out. Did it? Yeah. It came out three months ago. I'm so sleepy. Listen, I don't have time to go to the movies anymore. I don't pay attention to half of it. Well, you got the time. Yeah, you got the point. He's got a point. Okay, this one glues in on page 42. Oh, honey, I wish I was your age again. Whew. Maya says I'm getting too old. A 10 o'clock? I could do a 10 o'clock. Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm usually here for 10 hours anyway, so it wouldn't make a difference to me. <laughs> the rest of y'all would be here until 5.30 instead of 3. I don't know. I we are not to. with a table. Um, if I give you this equation and I want you to come up with an input output table. Okay, so we know that y equals 5 thirds x. And I want a table of values. I tell you nothing else. What are you looking for? Points. Points. Okay. So, can I tell you that x is zero? If Why not? She, if she tells you if x is zero, can you tell her what y is? Zero. Why? Because there is no y. She said x is zero. So, why? Would you say y is zero? Um, 
So what if she but said Angela is 23? So what if you're zero? Why would be What if I? What does that equation have over there on the left? Nothing. It says y equals five third x. So x is zero. And y is five. So what do I do with zero? If I have this equation and I tell you that x is zero, what do I do with it? You're going a little too far than what I wanted. What I want you to take it right now, Brenda. So if that x is zero over there, what does that x have to be? Zero. 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 So what if you have five thirds times now what x is zero? What is y? Zero. Why do you lie I don't like that. Ooh, I, <laughs> I hate that. Okay, which one are you talking about? I want to Remember, I can tell you what X is, I can tell you what Y is, and you can plug it in and solve, okay? So, we said if I plug in 0 for X, Y equals 5 thirds times 0, well, 5 thirds times 0 is 0. So, that gives you your first point of zero comma zero, okay? So your first point in your table should be zero comma zero, okay? Because when I take zero and replace X with zero, my amount is zero. Think about it. If I buy no candy bars, how much money am I spending? Zero. zero. Okay? <laughs> what if I buy one candy bar? So now, it's going to be five thirds because I replace X with a one. I'm going to give this to you in dollar amounts. So that's a dollar 67. Okay. Five thirds as a decimal is 1.66 repeating 1.67. So what's this telling me? If I buy one candy bar, I'm spending... A dollar sixty-seven. One candy bar is a dollar sixty-seven. What if I buy three candy bars? What if I change my X to a three? How do I take five thirds? Times three. Hold on. Yes. Okay. Remember, take a look at what Miss Blackwell just wrote on the board. Five thirds times three can be written as a fraction as three over one. So multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom and reduce. So what is five times three? Fifteen. And three times one is three. What does 15 over three reduce down to? Five. Five So if I buy how many candy bars? How many candy bars am I buying in that situation? Three. How much am I spending? Five dollars. Okay. So every time I buy three candy bars, I'm spending five dollars. What if I buy six candy bars then? I just doubled the amount of candy bars. It'll be 10. What? So I would spend ten dollars. Go right now. Oh, I get it. Okay. 
So if I up my amount of candy bars to six, that becomes 30 divided by three, which means $10. Why does it not make any type of sense? Talk to me. Every time you buy three candy bars, you spend $5. Oh. So if I double my amount of candy bars to six, I'd have to double the price to 10. Does that make sense? Okay. What if I buy nine candy bars? $15. Okay. Nine candy bars would be $15. Okay. So you can always pick values of X that are going to give you Y that are even numbers. So you're not dealing with the $1.67. Okay. So what if I told you I'm buying 30 candy bars? Maybe. Okay. So instead of buying three candy bars, remember every three candy bars, I spend five dollars. So I'm gonna buy 30 candy bars. How much? Fifty dollars. Okay, if I multiply three by 10 to get me to 30, I better multiply that money amount by 10 to give me 50. If you buy the candy bars, you just need extra. Maybe I'm buying new candy bars. If you are, <laughs> not that much. I mean, I have to buy 24 to make sure everybody in this classroom gets one. Well, actually, technically 26, and this black one, I don't feel left out. Exactly. Because, you know, we like chocolate just as much as y'all do. If not more. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Now that we have this table, how do I make myself a picture? We graph the points. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. So, zero comma zero should be at the origin. Okay. So instead of graphing the ones that are decimals, the dollar sixty-seven, let's graph the whole points that we have. So we know three candy bars means we're spending five dollars. Three, four, five. And we know that six candy bars. Three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're spending ten dollars. Do y'all want rollers? Okay. I keep forgetting that we're graphing lines. Jeez. Rulers. It's gonna keep going. Okay, the more candy bars I buy, the more money I'm going to spend. Four. One, two, three, four. You want a clear one? There. I'll take a green one. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay, listen, if I just looked at this equation, how do you know that it's linear? Because it's a straight You don't even have the graph anymore. All you have, let's say all I give you 
is this. That right there. How do I know that that's linear? Uh, it's not about the negatives. What did you say? I swear you just said it. The X. Okay. The fact that I have Y to the first power and X to the first power tells me that that is linear. Okay. So, in other words, if I change it up and I did this, Y equals 5 thirds X squared. This is no longer linear. What made this non-linear? This square. Okay? That is no longer linear because X is no longer to the first power. X is to the second power. Okay. Good. Oh, I always forget she has her own. Okay, let's go to the other side of this paper. That's like story of everybody's life. I always, I always hear that. But Miss Smith, that's too much. There is never too much here. Okay. So this time, I give you a situation. We need to come up with an equation. We need to come up with a table. And we need to graph this. So suppose that a bike rents for $4 plus $1.50 per hour. Write an equation in slope-intercept form that models this situation. Okay. Before I can do that, what is my slope in this problem, and how do you know that? Why? Why is my slope 150? Okay. So your keywords here are 150 per hour. That per hour makes this a slope. Okay. So... Maya just said, well, what about four plus? So when I walk in to rent my bike, they're going to automatically say, you owe me what? Four dollars. $4. Just to get your bike, you owe them four dollars. That's not going to be your X intercept. That's going to be your y. y intercept. Okay. That's going to be your starting point. That's how much you owe them just to walk in and take that bike out. Okay. So now that I have my slope and my y-intercept, I can write myself an equation. Y equals my slope times x, so 150x. Plus my y intercept of four dollars. Okay, now that I have my equation, if I rent my bike for one hour. How much am I going to spend if I rent my bike for one hour? Don't forget that initial amount. So not just a dollar fifty. Whoa! Five fifty. Remember when I rent the bike. You're four at four dollars flat, and then for that hour that you had it, you spend an extra dollar fifty. Okay, so you get charged four dollars no matter what, even if you don't ride the bike at all. Four dollars. Okay, then you get a dollar fifty for the hour. 
What if I ride my bike for two hours? Okay. Three dollars to ride it plus the four dollars initially. So you're spending a total of seven dollars. What if I keep it for three hours? Eight fifty. Okay, remember, every hour that this continues, my price goes up by a dollar fifty. So eight fifty for three hours. For four hours, we're gonna increase up to ten dollars. Yeah, it's cold in here. Oh, it's hot. It's freezing. Yeah. So, we can now take all these values that you just got and create ourselves a table. Yes. What do you mean, notations on that? Yes, we're plugging in values for X. We're plugging in the amount of hours. Okay. So you just created this table of values. Remember, X represents the hours that you have the bike. Your Y represents the total amount of money you spend. So what's my last Y value going to be if I increase to five hours? Eleven Okay, go ahead and graph those points. And your line should look something like this. Okay. 550 is just halfway between 5 and 6. 850 is just halfway between 8 and 9. So I should be able to give you any situation and give you a list of tables and you should be able to tell me what table goes with that situation. I should be able to give you any equation and you should be able to look at a bunch of graphs and tell me this is the one I need. You have to be able to see it in all four of the forms. When you're done with that graph, please cut this one in half. It glues in on 43 and 44. Cut this in half? Yes. Cut it in half. One goes on 43. The other half goes on 44. No, 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 go back. I run my fingernails across it. I like crisp lines. It's easier, and then you don't have to cut it, you can just rip it.
It doesn't matter which one goes on 43 and which one goes on 44. Just put one on 43 and one on 44. They're still all the same types of problems. Oh, so this one's the 13th anymore. I need to change my date. It's the 16th. It is. My husband's birthday's on Friday. He's going to be the big old 32. My husband. How did you? 33. Are you on here? He calls me his cougar. I told him I'm not old enough to be a cougar. Am I his soulmate? I mean, I'd say yes. Thank you. Oh, I like you. I double like you. He says I look younger than my husband. I like it. It'll be 32 on Friday. Why is that his last I'll be 34 in February. Yeah, it's, it's not by much. That's why when he calls me a sugar, I laugh at Because I don't think I'm old enough to be a sugar. That would be like a 20 year difference, or at least a 10 year. Come on, pal. It doesn't matter. I don't know who you look at. I need you to stop and I need your eyes up here again. Okay, this time they gave us a table. They tell me X is the number of weeks and Y is the number of stories completed on a new building. So, what does this first point mean? Zero for my X and three for my Y. Zero, zero, Okay, so we have no weeks and we have three stories, which means when I start working on this building, it already has three stories. So this is your Y intercept. Okay, that's my Y intercept. Brenda also said when I go to graph this, this means zero on my X 
and up three on my y. So plot that point. Zero comma three. Okay. So that's my starting point. Zero comma three. What does my next point mean? How long have I worked? One week. And we have five stories. So what have I increased by? Two stories. Okay, so I've increased by two stories. So in one week, we've increased by two stories. Okay, so in one week, we've increased by two stories. So plot that point, one comma five. Okay, we also have a point at two comma seven, three comma nine, and four comma 11. So go ahead and plot those points. So we're at two comma seven, three comma nine, and four comma 11 is actually off of the graph. So how many stories am I building every week? Two. Okay. Every week that I've increased, my stories have increased by two. So that is actually my my rhombus. If I'm increasing by two stories a week, what is that? What value is that? That's my M. That's my slope. Okay, so my slope is 2 over 1. Two stories per week. So Y equals 2X. And where did I say we started at? 3. Three. My building had three stories before we even started working on it. Okay. So apparently we're building some kind of a hotel or office building. Is it really two stories a week if they did the like this I mean, it all would depend on how much is on the crew and how good the crew is. But yeah, they could build two stories a week. I wonder how long it takes to build. You're alone. You're following the solid ground, so all you gotta do is just. Questions. Okay. Last one, friends. Okay. This time. They gave us a graph. They gave us a graph. So where is my Y intercept on this graph? Four. Four. Zero comma four. So let's make that the first point of our table. Zero comma four. Okay. Let's find a next good solid point on this graph. Not there, not there, not there, not there. It looks about here. Five, comma, six. Five, comma, six. And then it looks like another one about here. So that's ten, comma. Eight. Eight. So we're at zero comma four, we're at five comma six, and we're at ten comma eight. Okay. 
So let's see if we can write an equation here now. Okay, what's my slope? Five. Two over five. Two over five. Remember, your slope is always change in y. So how much it goes up. So we're going up by two. And then I'm going to the right by five. So that means my slope is two over five. So y equals two fifths x plus four. Okay, that's my y-intercept, two-fifths x plus four. Okay, so it's increasing. Let's see what we're even talking about here. So, X is the number of greeting cards printed. Apparently, we're like homework now. Okay. How many greeting cards have we printed? And the total cost of the greeting cards. So, if we printed no cost of the greeting cards, we spent $4. What do you think that's for? Just to have the ink, the card stock for it. Okay. We haven't printed anything yet, and we've already spent money. We've printed five greeting cards and now I've spent $6. We've printed 10 and we've now spent eight. Give me another point that would fit into this table. 15, 15 and 10. and 12. Good. Questions? Yes. You got it. That's your slope. X I add five. Y I add two. Yes. Yes. Okay. These clue in on pages 44. Or I'm sorry, 45 and 46. My bad. 45 and 46. Cut it in half again. Hey, the page that's coming around right now is your homework. It's not oh, all already? I mean, we still have 20 minutes, so I want, to, I want you to have time to work on this. The last 10 minutes, I'll pass out your exit tickets. Okay. Listen, there are two problems for your homework assignment tonight. That's it. <laughs> How are we feeling about these groups? Good. Good. I actually like I think we might stick with these groups. For a little bit, but not like. For a long time. We might stick with these groups for a week or two. One. Instead of switching up all the time. I didn't. I 